In Lesson 10.4, you will find probabilities of disjoint and overlapping events. The union or intersection of two events is called a compound event. If A and B are any two events, then the probability of A or B is given by this equation. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. If A and B are disjoint events, then the probability of A or B is given by this equation, where the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. In example one, a six-sided die is rolled. What is the probability that the number rolled is A, a multiple of three or five? Well, when we roll that six-sided die, the outcomes could be the numbers one through six, and if we roll a multiple of three, those possibilities are three and six. So that probability is two, two successes out of six possibilities. And then if we roll a multiple of five, that is only one success. So the probability of a rolling a multiple of three or, and we're gonna add a multiple of five, is two six plus one six, one success out of six possibilities. And since there's no intersection, no multiples of three or five that are the same, all we have to do is add here to get our probability. So we're gonna get three six, which simplifies to one half. So there's a one half probability that a number rolled would be a multiple of three or five. Okay, in B, we want to know what the probability is that a number rolled is a multiple of two or three. Well, we have the same outcomes, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if a multiple of two is rolled, we have three successes possible. So we have a probability of three successes out of six possibilities. Or, and we're gonna add when we say or, the probability that a multiple of three is rolled is two successes, a three or a six. So that's two successes out of six possibilities. But there's an intersection. There's an intersection that we have to subtract because both two and three have a multiple the same. They have the multiple of six the same. So that's one success out of six possibilities. That one success out of six possibilities was counted twice in our sum, so we have to subtract it from that sum in order to get the correct probability. So. It looks like five, six, take away one, six, which is four, six, and four, six simplifies to two thirds. So there's a two thirds probability that a multiple of two or three is rolled. In example two, a poll was taken and it was found that six out of 15 high school juniors took a French class 11 out of 15 took a math class, and 14 out of 15 took French or math. What is the probability that a junior took French and math? Well, we can use our equation, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, now we know the probability of A or B. That's the probability that a junior took French or math, and that's 14 out of 15. So 14 successes out of 15 possibilities. Which means the probability of A occurring would be the probability of a junior taking French class and that's given as 16 out of uh, six out of 15. So six successes out of 15 possibilities. And the probability that B occurs, B is 
whether a junior takes a math class, and that is given as 11 out of 15. So 11 successes out of 15 possibilities is what we'll substitute in. And we're going to solve for the probability that a junior took French and math. So all we have to do is add and get 6 fifteenths plus 11 fifteenths. That's seven, 17 fifteenths, and we'll subtract that from both sides of our equation, leaving negative the probability of A and B, which again, remember, is the probability that a junior took French and math. Okay, so subtracting on the left, we get negative 3 fifteenths is equal to minus the probability of A and B. And now, dividing both sides by negative 1, we find out that the probability of A and B, which represents the probability of a junior taking French and math, is equal to 3 fifteenths or 1 fifth. There's a 1 fifth probability that a junior took French and math. The event A bar is the complement of event A and consists of all outcomes not in A. The probability of the complement of A is the probability of A bar is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. In example 3, a card is randomly selected from a deck standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that it is A, not a king? Well, in A, rather than listing all the, all the probabilities that we would have if our um, card that was randomly selected is not a king, we can use a complement here. It might be easier and quicker to solve and find 1 minus the probability that this card is a king. Because that would equal 1 minus the probability that it is a king, since there's four kings in a deck of 52 cards, our successes are 4 and our possibilities are 52. And if we subtract, we have 52, which is e 52 over 52, which is equal to 1 minus 4 50 seconds, or 48 50 seconds, which simplifies getting rid of a factor of 4 top and bottom to 12 thirteenths. So there's a 12 thirteenths probability that a card selected from a deck of 52 cards is not a king. Okay, let's try B. What is the probability that it is not an ace or a jack? Again, rather than listing all the possible probabilities that we would get if it's not an ace or a jack, again, it's better to use the complement. 1 minus the probability that it is an ace or a jack. Which would look like this. 1 minus well, the probability that it's an ace, since there's four aces in this deck of 52, would be 4 50 seconds again. Or, so we're going to add the probability that it's a jack, since there's four jacks in this deck of 52, we have another 4 50 seconds probability. And now, subtracting, we'll write 1 as 52 50 seconds, and we'll add to get 8 50 seconds in parentheses. So when we subtract 52 50 seconds, take away 8 50 seconds, we're going to get 44 50 seconds. And getting rid of that factor of 4 top and bottom again, our probability simplifies to 11 thirteenths. There's 11 thirteenths probability that a card selected from a deck of 52 is not an ace or a jack. In example 4, there are 10 people at a dinner party. What is the probability that at least two people have the same birthday month? Well, again, 
rather than listing all of those probabilities that at least two people, which means two people could have the same birthday month, three people, four people, five people, all the way out to all 10 people could have the same birthday month. It's gonna be much quicker, quicker to use a complement. One minus the probability that no one has the same birthday month. So we'll say the probability that none are the same. which will be one minus the probability that none are the same, which means they're all different. So we can use the fundamental counting principle to count how many possibilities there are. 12 choices for the first person's birthday month, 11 left for the second, 10 left for the third, and so on. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and three for the tenth person's birthday month. Three left for the tenth person's birthday month. Those are our, possi uh, our successes. Now our possibilities in the denominator, since they could all have any of the 12 months, would be 12 to the tenth power. Okay, and now simplifying or running this through our calculator, we're going to have 1 minus, I'm going to cancel a factor of 12 top and bottom, which means I have 12 to the ninth power in the denominator. So I'll run that through the calculator, and I'll get 1 minus approximately 0 0.003868. So I'm getting a probability of 0.996. We usually round our probabilities in decimal form to three decimal places. So there's a 0.996 probability that at least two people have the same birthday month. There's a good chance that at least two people have the same birthday month. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 8 on pages 708 and 709 of your textbook.